Today we're taking the ultimate coffee challenge, trying coffee that is made with poop. I mean, I keep drinking it, I mean, it's gotta be. In the coffee world, exotic beans, grinds, and glassware can only get you so far. When those aren't enough, coffee connoisseurs turn to the best thing money can buy to enhance their bean-brewed beverages, the digestive systems of cats. Browsing Ripley's Believe It or Not's collection of coffee artwork makes it clear that humankind's fascination with the morning concoction is something that deserves serious attention. We've got coffee pots made out of human skulls by Tibetan monks who take their morning joe with butter and salt. We've got coffee pots made from used bullet casings in the trenches of World War I. We've got dresses made of coffee filters, Oprah Winfrey and Ellen DeGeneres rendered in coffee beans alone, and even odes to the Mona Lisa and Robert Ripley himself all made from coffee. Suffice to say, it's clear people are obsessed with the stuff. Poop. 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 Now, we'll get to the reason for drinking cat poop coffee in a moment, but first, let's just dive in with a taste test. We won't be doing anything close to cupping the official process for testing the taste of coffee, but instead we'll be following this particular provider's suggested method. And it's definitely a mellow coffee, but mostly it's just, I feel like the fruitiest coffee I've ever had. All right, so that's Civet Cat Coffee. The smell is pretty complex. It's definitely got a very strong fruity smell. A little bit acidic, not as, not as like round of a smell, like not that deep chocolate. I mean, it's very chocolatey smelling, but not as much as I had kind of expected. Um, well, before it gets uh, too cold here, here's mud in your eye. Well, the good news is it does not taste like kitty litter. It's got a very fruity taste. It's a very dark, Kind of coffee very strong but not too acidic definitely some acidity there though i kind of expected it to be really really mellow but i've definitely had more mellow coffee i should say too generally i'm a person who is very keen on tannins i don't mind it being like bitter i wouldn't call this coffee bitter i would call it like a good mellow coffee if you're someone who doesn't like you know, black coffees or, you know, acidic coffees or coffees that have been, you know, blasted with too much hot water. It's pretty good and very, very fruity. I think it's probably, probably the fruitiest coffee I've ever had, which is interesting. I guess that has to do with the Civet Cats finding the ripest cherries and, you know, like eating them right. I couldn't tell you what the fermentation is really doing though other than just making the flavor more complex, like it's definitely harder to pick out, you know, like, oh, it's in this strange, this really strong fruity direction, or it's in this really bitter direction. It's very in the middle, but very bold. It really just tastes like a little bit fruitier cup of coffee. All right, so it's not just the feces that make a cup of coffee special. The feces are just a necessary part of fermentation in the guts of a civet cat. Civet cats aren't true cats, they're more like marten or weasel roaming the treetops of Southeast Asia. Now, as you may have learned in a previous episode of Cool Stuff Strange Things, where we broke down how everything you thought was a fruit was a berry or a vice versa. These are the only actual nuts in this mixed nuts tin. Not nuts and nuts. Seeds and legumes, just nuts. 
What is this world coming to? Coffee beans are not beans at all. They're the hard pits found inside the coffee fruit, also known as the coffee cherry. Well, way back when Dutch imperialists occupied Indonesia, native farmers and workers were banned from harvesting coffee to use for themselves, as colonial rulers wanted it all shipped to Europe where they could make a hefty profit. Now, looking to scrounge up coffee wherever they could, natives quickly realized that the civet cats could use their keen sense of smell and arboreal agility to find and eat the ripest cherries. Unable to digest the coffee pit, their excrement was full of coffee beans. Now, since the civet cat's digestion stripped the bean of the surrounding flesh, farmers needed only wash and roast the beans to turn them into coffee, the beverage. What these farmers realized was that the combination of civet cat's picky eating and digestion resulted in a coffee that was phenomenally richer and mellower than the beans they were harvesting for the Dutch. While this coffee began its life as a substitute for impoverished and oppressed farmers, today it claims to have the title of the most expensive coffee in the world. Civet coffee, often also labeled Kopi Luwak, can fetch prices of over $600 per pound. A single cup of prepared civet coffee can cost over $100. The reason for these high prices is a simple function of supply and demand. As the islands of Southeast Asia undergo development and land loss due to sea level rise, civet territory shrinks. Collecting civet droppings in the wild can be incredibly time intensive as well, which has led some civet coffee suppliers to keep captive animals and feed them nothing but coffee cherries. Pair that with a demand for an incredibly niche and trendy coffee experience and the price just keeps going up. Obtaining sustainable civet coffee, like the beans taste tested by the Ripley's team, remains difficult. There are firms, however, trying to replicate this fermentation process synthetically. Now, the only coffee question remaining is do you drink it from an elegant mug or a novelty mug? Let us know your mug preference in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon because you'll never want to miss an episode of Cool Stuff Strange Things. Till next time, I think I'm going to pour myself a second cup. Normally I drink from my left hand, but I think for today we'll uh, switch to this side. <laughs>